Hello and welcome to Octagon Presents, how to get started writing comic scripts. My name is Paul Carroll and today is Free Comic Book Day. So who am I? I am a founding member of Limit Break Comics, which has been running for almost five years now. Uh, I'm the website manager for Irish Comics Today, which is running for almost two years and publishes a new comic page every weekday. Uh, I'm the writer for The Ren for Buy Button Press Publications. And most relevant to here, I am the chair for Octacon 2023. Uh, these are some of my key publications, just so you know that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, so Turning Roads and Down Below are two anthologies that I have put together since 2021. And uh, the follow-up to them, Fractured Realms, finished crowdfunding earlier this year. Uh, so they are myth anthologies. There's 18 stories of Turning Roads, 22 in Down Below. And then Aside from them, I work on uh, Meowch, which is an action comedy with Gareth Luby, and Plexus, which is a ongoing sci-fi anthology series. So what does a comic writer do? Uh, the whole point of a comic script is to get the message to the artist and the other members of the art team. Uh, it is a letter from the writer to the artist and the others, and no one else really sees these things once they're out in the world. Uh, unless there's plenty of back matter in comics. The whole point is to tell the story to the artist, including spoilers. So you want to tell them what's happening, who's saying what, and what are the important details. The key thing being, you know, there's a gun on the counter. That gun is important to include later. So you want to make sure that the artist draws it into the page. The script should contain everything that an artist needs to tell the story, and you should never really hide details from them. So even if you're trying to be coy, you want the artist to convey that to the reader rather than you trying to convey that to the artist. You want them to know everything so that they can be clued in and work with you. There are two types of scripts that exist, roughly speaking. Uh, there is a standard script, which looks sort of like a film script or a play script. Uh, there's no real one format for it. Lots of people have their own ways of doing it. Um, and the other way is called the Marvel style, which was back when Stan Lee was writing everything. And he would effectively write a one page synopsis of the comic or, you know, he might break it in page by page, but very briefly. And the artist did all the heavy lifting. So a standard script, uh, you can see one of my own here. This is from a comic called Dead Ringer with Gavin Fullerton. So this is how I format my scripts. There's no actual format for how to do it, which is incredibly frustrating for anyone who's trying to break in. Um, the helpful things to note, uh, the number of panels per page. So I'll include that at the top of the page so that the artist, if they're reading it and the descriptions of the panels goes onto a second page on their screen or printout, they know that there's more to come on the actual comic page. You want to establish the details for the artist. So who is where and what they look like, things like that. I try to reduce as much of that as possible as the story goes on. So I'm just telling the actions in the story. Uh, you'll want to include distinguishable dialogue in the page. Um, so I, I'll, I'll use the tab function quite a lot. So the, the dialogue is centered and you know who's saying what based on each line. Um, you want to include sound effects. So I, I include one in this particular page. I don't always. Um, and reference images or links if they're relevant. Some people will put loads of them in. I tend not to include too many because generally my scripts are easy enough to follow and I don't ask for too much from an artist, but that could all change. Um, and this is the Marvel style of scripts. So this is an example from Richard Davidson. Uh, his script was The Hawthorns, which is in Turning Roads. Uh, Richard is a member of Back Pocket Comics up in Northern Ireland. So it's it's written as prose. The artist decides the panel count and the layout. It puts more work on the artist, so you always want to check with an artist that that sort of style suits them first before you hand over a script in that format. Um, but regardless, you want to make sure to include all of the relevant details, whether you're breaking things down to panels. Um, so this is what I call the numbers game, just as a general guideline for panels and pages. So 2000 AD, which are larger format, they're A4 roughly, uh, they say five to seven panels per page. Uh, for a US comic, you'd want to go three to seven, depending on the size of the panels, but you want to average four or five, which seems very little, but it is about all you can really fit on neatly when you have dialogue. Um, standard US comics are about 22 pages, 
well, that does vary according to publisher. And if you're producing small press books, you aren't really restricted. You can make your book shorter or longer. Um, you want to vary the, number, the amount of panels per page to for a variety of pace. And this will also uh, depend on what you're trying to show in the panels. So if you have an establishing shot to show the scene, that will take up quite a lot of the page and you won't want to put too much else onto that page. You want to have a key moment. Uh, in terms of dialogue and other text, so there are two different things you'd be looking at. There's captions and speech bubbles, and then there's sound effects. Uh, so panels shouldn't contain more than three, what I call text spaces, so that's captions or speech bubbles. Uh, they shouldn't contain more than 25 words, and that's according to 2000 AD standards, which again is larger format. So you're looking at maybe 50 to 60 words per panel of dialogue or captions. Because uh, you, you want to leave space for people to see the art, especially if you're paying someone to produce it for you. You don't want to be paying all that money and then hiding it behind your words. Um, in terms of sound effects, you want to write them into the script. A good letter will make them part of the art and a really creative letterer will add in their own sound effects where they feel it is appropriate. And generally, if you're hiring someone as a letterer uh, because of their work, you're kind of accepting that they might be doing these things if it's something that they are known to do. Um, it's one of our favorite parts of Meowch, for example, our letterer Hassan just puts in his own lettering uh, formats and styles. He introduced a whole new sound effect, the word gross, when brains are blowing up the back of someone's head. It's not really for kids. Uh, page layouts. So this is just image stolen from the internet, but it's, it's an idea to show you how we read the flow of the page on comics. This is very basic, um, generally just showing that we go from left to right in a kind of Z motion, but the eye will follow the key details on the art and it'll follow the caption boxes. So as you're writing, you want to keep in mind what you want to be conveyed on the panel and what is being said because the eye will be wandering all over the page otherwise. So a good idea is to practice some layouts from your own script. You don't need to be an amazing artist to do it. You just want to you know, figure out what the page might look like if you were to draw it, if you could draw. Um, so we examine the page the flow of the page, I should say. We read left or right, the same as in prose, uh, unless you're reading manga, in which case, reverse it. But it's whatever language the, the comic is originating from, whatever direction they read is usually the direction you'd read the comic. Um, different elements that'll catch a reader's attention are lighting dialogue and blank spaces. And while a writer doesn't necessarily always dictate these things, it is worthwhile remembering them. Page turns are the big thing, so whether you're releasing digitally or in print, you'll have a page turn. And that is the act of when you turn over the page, you get a reveal. So it's a chance for surprises and for twists and to make a bigger impact. Um, and it's usually good for if you want to have the first reveal of a character or a location or you're hiding something throughout the rest of the comic and you want to end on a page turn or towards the end, have a page turn that'll surprise them, bring in a twist. 2000 AD Future Shocks are all about twists, so the last page is usually reserved for that, so that when someone goes through a double page spread, they then have the last page to surprise them. So who does what in a comic? So I've been using all these different words, um, writer, artist, letter. So writer handles the script. It's usually the first step in the process of making a comic, unless you have an artist approach a writer with the idea. Uh, the artist then uses the scripts to create pencils and or inks. You don't really have a comic without an artist. You can you can go as far as that and stop and still have a comic, but if you don't have someone to actually produce the art, you don't actually have a comic. Uh, you have a script, which not much use to anyone. Uh, the colorist will add the color to the inks. Um, it requires more than just coloring between the lines. It's, it's about building storytelling into the use of the individual colors. And it's also about helping the page flow. Um, a lot of colors will also use flatters. Uh, so they let down just flat blocks of color and it makes it easier for someone who has a better eye for the art side of it to manage what it'll look like. Basically it takes all of the busy work out of it. A letter will add in captions, speech bubbles, sound effects. It's part design and it's part art and a lot of people think that they can do it. Mostly they can do the very basics. I am one of those people. Um, 
it's a cost saving measure, let's say. And then there's also an editor uh, who will oversee different aspects of the production of the comic. Uh, so I edit anthologies as my main thing. Um, and from that, it's also part of publisher role, but it depends on what stage of comics you're in. So for small press, an editor might just help you fix up your script or they will have an overview of everything from layouts to the ink dart to the colors, letters. It all depends. And it depends on what you're looking for. So, so two things not to forget. A writer does more than write a script and a writer is kind of an art director of the comic, but they don't get to control every single detail. Um, so here's what the, the process looks like. So this is from uh, Me Out. This is my murder cat comic that I showed earlier. Uh, so this is from page 14. Um, so this is the art. And we'll, we can see here immediately the script is different to the final page because the artist opted not to include part. Um, in truth, he forgot it, but it doesn't matter because the comic didn't need it. So when it came to the lettering stage, we removed it. So we go from script to art, to colors, then onto letters. And you can see Hassan will have added ring in behind Donnie's arm. You can see the, the way the captions are working and the speech bubbles are working throughout the page. And the colors in this case provided by Joe Griffin help guide the eye throughout the page and provide lighting where the ink stumped. So some tips for your script. The first speaker on the page should always appear on the left-hand side of the panel. Uh, so that's usually because when you're reading the comic, you're going to read left to right. So you want the eye to follow the person speaking to their speech bubble. And the next speech bubble that they read is connected to the next person. Yeah. It doesn't make sense in the abstract, but when you read any comic that is lettered correctly, you'll understand that. Uh, relevant details to add to a script, time of day, weather, who's in the scene, including people who aren't actually speaking and an object that a character needs to use, a gun or a chair, because if they need to sit down, the artist needs to make sure that's there. You want to put the character names in all caps during a panel description to help an artist see them. Uh, I have mostly been doing this in the kind of second half of my quote-unquote career um, as a means of making things easier for the artists that I work with, especially as I started working with more artists on various different types of script. Uh, and you want to use a clear font for your script. You don't have to use Courier New, which is the standard for screenplays. It just needs to be visible. And keep in mind, a lot of artists are just going to work from a screen. So a sans serif font is actually easier for them than a serif font. And one page of a comic should not be more than one page of a script, generally speaking, unless it's like the first page and you're setting the scene, in which case your first panel might take up a lot more space than you normally would. How much should you write? Uh, first panel on page one, which describes the whole scene, whether the artist needs the specifics for that panel or not. Subsequent panels, you want to address what is happening in the panel. The key thing to remember is that you only have one action per person per panel. So you can't have someone jump, kick, and then land on their feet again, all in one panel, because it's just a snapshot of a moment. It's like if you pause the movie at individual points, you end up with just static moments and the movement or anything else any other action is supposed to be applied rather than being shown exactly in detail you're establishing panel so it's somewhere at the start of the script uh it's a chance for you to tell the artist and the rest of the art team everything they need to know about a scene and if you are moving between scenes in different times of day you want to make sure that that is very clear as the story goes on and remember, you're communicating with the art team. No one else is going to see what you write. So be direct and ask questions for further discussion. Uh, on that note, remember the comics are a collaborative medium. So the writer might get the ball rolling, but everyone's say is important. Learning from theatre. So the arts are quite collaborative. Theatre and film are two very collaborative art forms that are not unlike comics, except that they don't take place on a page. Uh, when actors are working on rehearsals, they will block out a scene and they will figure out where everyone is standing. Um, so it, it helps to figure out how many people are in the scene, how many are invisible, and who is doing what. And again, remember, one action per panel per person. 
Uh, you want to stop your characters from getting in the way of each other. So you don't want to overcrowd a scene, not just because it's difficult to write all of that in, but also because it's really mean to your artist. So let's not hurt the artists in our lives. You don't want to override the dialogue either. So the, the speech will have to go somewhere. In real life, people tend to ramble and they will get their words mixed up or they will just keep talking and talking and talking. But in comics, you don't have the luxury of that sort of space. So you want to keep everything succinct, which makes everything look slightly static and unreal, but you kind of just have to go with it. Uh, and you also don't want to block your protagonist or protagonists from the audience's view. So you don't want to bury your characters in the background of a panel or put some more speech in from other people that you can't see any faces. What can they learn from film and photography? So the golden rule, it's our eyes are drawn to one important detail. You can see that in the image that I stole from the internet. Um, and then there's a thing called the rule of thirds. So the white line on the, the spiral is the golden rule, everything leading into the one part of, on the image. The rule of thirds, it breaks page up or an image up into thirds. Uh, so the, the red lines are doing that for you there. And the important details are usually at the intersection of those lines. Uh, writers don't necessarily have to worry about these things when they're putting them into a script, but it's important to remember that visuals play a key role in comics, so you don't ask for too much from a scene. Uh, in terms of dialogue, so dialogue is a thing lots of people struggle with. Um, I still trip over it quite a bit in real life and in writing. Uh, but some four, four tips to improve it in a comic. Uh, listen to people talking. Um, eavesdropping in public is great. Um, public transport, coffee shops. People tend to just talk and share their business with the world. Take notes on how they speak, particularly if you're writing a story set in the town where the people are speaking. Uh, listen to talks and podcasts on specialist topics. So you can take note of the jargon and... You don't need to use all of it, but it is helpful if you're trying to write from a uh, an expert's point of view in a comic to use the same sort of words that someone in that field actually uses. Uh, tip three, read your dialogue out loud. It is the most painful part of all of this. I do recommend recording yourself so you can hear how something sounds when it is spoken out loud. I used it when I was writing scripts uh, for theater back in college, and it is a great way of making something sound authentic and real and you can take note of where sentences sound clunky. And it when, when you have very few words, it helps to be able to make them sound as natural as possible. And then four, only write as much dialogue as a person can say during an action. So if you're caught with someone jumping, they won't have time for a lot of words. They might get six words out while they're jumping across a room or running across a room. And if they're running, they might be able to speak at all. So just keep those sorts of things in mind. Collaborators. So we've gone through all of this. We've spoken about the different roles. Where can you find collaborators? Because comics are a collaborative medium and unless you're one of those magical, amazing people who can do all the work themselves, you need help. So in person, go to events like Octacon. Uh, you can meet people. You can ask them about their work. Um, there's also, you know, signings in shops. The Big Bang puts on a few in Dublin. Um, but comic shops all over the world will tend to host signings and events as often as they can because it's a great way of getting people into the shop. Um, and it's also where you can meet other people who make comics. Online, Irish Comic News, if the site is still up, I haven't checked. Uh, it does have it reviews and interviews of people so you have an idea of who is doing what in comics. Uh, comics Ireland, which is the site that I had been running, uh, features the same sort of content. It has... A, half-built directory of people but again you can always just contact me if you want to um, i do like connecting people to artists and other creators um, irish comics Study is a living website um uh, coming to the second year and we have at the time of recording over 470 pages um, and there are 40 odd creators on that site each doing different roles generally lots of writers and then the artists match up with them and a few of the magical people who can do everything. Uh, the Double Comic Jam is a place where you can find people who might not necessarily be putting a lot of work out in public, but who like making comics. Uh, Creator Advisor is an international platform, so it's Canadian. Um, they tend to put out calls for 
people to find collaborators. So you, you can mess it, you can submit rather um, a request for someone to fit a particular story, but you can also then look at their Twitter feed, look at the responses that pe- that are that their tweets are getting. Uh, so you can see artists who are sending in their portfolios. And then I put it in here, Twitter. It works on any social media platform where you're active, but Twitter works well because people tend to respond to it. Tell people looking for an artist. It's how I found Gavin Fullerton for Dead Ringer. Um, he messaged me about it because I put up a tweet saying I was looking for artists for short horror comics. So specify your genre, specify what you're looking for, and you want to make sure you're paying people. So one at a time is usually uh, 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 all people can afford. But if you're if you're lucky, you can start making quite a few at the same time. Uh, pitching an art, a story to an artist. So contact them. Email is best because then you have a secure and recorded conversation. Um, social media can get deleted. And if the artist leaves social media, you can possibly lose all of the information that you had from them. You want to tell them how many pages are in the comic, what it's about, and how you plan to release it. Also when, but if the when is less important than the how, it's not relevant to include. Uh, you want to ask them what their page rate is. So that you know how much the, you need to be able to pay them um, and what their timeline is if they're interested. And that's more from the point of view of knowing when you'd be able to pass it on to another person if you need to. So if you're hiring individual people on a team and the artist, obviously be going before the colors, you want to know when the colors will get the work and when the letter will get the work. And attach a pitch document if you have one. Um, so this is my pitch document for Dead Ringer. Uh, it follows a few different things. Concept, basic idea. Uh, summary of the story, the tone that you're seeking, length of the comic, and in, in this case, because it's only an eight-page comic, uh, breakdown of the page. Tell them how you plan on publishing it. and Tell them your comics history, if you have one. Um, I also put in a summary of what I'm looking for sometimes. Uh, adapting pitches for an anthology um, I can do a whole other workshop on this but you want to keep things like the concept the story the tone and the page length you want to remove the publication plan because that's up to the anthology and you want to add in your bios so that they know who the creators are on the pitch or portfolio again there's a whole other thing I can do for this um, but put some short comics to begin with they're good for practice they show that you can make comics and they show you're going to make what you like. Uh, post your work online. So have a dedicated space on your website or make a free website to host your pages. Um, WordPress, absolutely fine to use. Tumblr, it can be a bit messy because of the way it orders things. But anything where you can control the, the way the, the content is viewed, um, I use content in the broadest term, but the way so, so people can, can navigate it more easily and find individual pieces. Um, that's all you really need. It doesn't need, you don't need to buy a domain name even. It can, you can, it can say .wordpress.com. Um, Twitter has a thriving community of comic creators. You can post your short comics there. Um, and hopefully something that is less hellish will come along in the future. Uh, regularly update your portfolio. So you want to remove the old work, put your best work first. So you need to be kind of critical of yourself. Always credit your art team. Um, not just because it's the decent thing to do, but also so anyone looking at it knows what your role was in the work. And mention whether it's been published already, because if you have had a story published somewhere, it kind of gives you a bit of um, clout. You can say that you are a published creator. Um, and when you're asked to send a portfolio, you can either send a link or a file, depending on what's requested. Um, your portfolio does not have to be entirely public so you can send over a google drive or dropbox link to something that's private so long as anyone with the link can view it Uh, and you can make a portfolio in word and export it as a pdf if you need to you need on google docs as well for free Uh, you just need to make sure the pages take up as much space as possible so they're easy to read size it in a4 removing the margins stuff like that Uh, key tips for pitches Read guidelines carefully. 
Um, so you want to pitch within the genre and the page count. Uh, I have had pitches for 24 page comics for four page stories. Um, and I have had pitches for noir crime comics or horror. Uh, you want to pitch before a deadline, so no time zones because I have got things late as well. Um, try to be original, especially when pitching to a themed anthology. So I, I focus on mythology for mine, but there are plenty of other anthologies out there that do wackier and riskier stuff. Um, don't use the first trope that you find online. Uh, I got a lot of puka pitches for Turning Roads. I got a lot of Hades and Persephone pitches when I was doing Down Below, which was Greek myth. Um, people picked the thing that was very popular. And we were only accepting one of those. Uh, don't pick a standard element of a genre as your main plot element. And don't just copy existing work. Um, I, I tend to pick people not to copy Wicked and the Divine when pitching to me. Because it's already been done. I don't need to read it written by someone else. Uh, releasing your own comics. So two different ways of doing this. Digitally, uh, webcomic, pick a platform that works for you. Tapas um, and... Webtoon are good ways of putting things out into a broader uh, publishing platform. Irish Comic Study is specifically for Irish creators, and we try to push people as much as possible so that people can see them. Uh, or just use your own website or a combination of the above. Um, Irish Comic Study, for example, will republish things. And Aaron Fever and Hugh Madden have published Mr. and Mrs. Van Helsing on Tapas since it published on Irish Comics City. So you're not, these aren't exclusive platforms. Um, and you can publish short comics, so four pages uh, on Twitter, because you can put up four images, or on a webcomic platform. Uh, physically, you want to put your comic in print. So you can make your own label, rely just on your name, or join the label. So Limit Break, Rogue, Back Pocket. All three have tended to work with people in the past. Um, but it, it does depend on, on the sort of ethos of those groups. Um, bring your comic to events uh, and or make an online store. Online stores are trickier, especially now that um, Brexit and EU shipping regulations have gotten much more difficult to follow. Um, print in CMYK, which is a printing term. I do recommend looking at uh, Comic Printing UK's website. He had a blog at some point where he was describing different things in printing um, which tends to be very useful to know just don't ignore him um, and he will talk about bleeds quite a lot um, worth looking them up bleeds in print not bleeding people um, and your page count should be a multiple of four otherwise it is impossible to print uh, again you can ask Rich about that but Effectively, if you take one piece of paper and fold it over, which is how things get bound along the spine, effectively, you have one, two, three, four pages. And that's where that comes from. You, you can't print anything less than a multiple of four or anything more. And there we go. If you have questions, you can email me or you can find me on social media. I am on quite a few of them. I have not moved over to Mastodon or Hive, but I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I have my own website. And you can also just bother the Irish comics that are people because we've kind of taken it upon ourselves to be useful. In the meantime, Octacon is an event that is happening later this year. We're taking place on the 7th and 8th of October uh, in the Gibson Hotel and online. So the Gibson is down by the Tree Arena uh, in the Point Village. Very accessible by public transport. Our guest of honour is Sarah Reese Brennan. And we have a few more guests to be announced along the way. A um, few more months to go. Membership is available through octacon.com. Uh, I have been Paul Carroll and I hope you have heard something. Thank you.